I sincerely welcome each and every one of you to this very important event. We have three extremely special people that we will be honoring tonight. I think you'll enjoy the program. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to have our salads. They're going to serve the food as quickly as possible because we want to save as much time uh, in order to hear the testimonies and uh, the individuals that's being honored this evening. Father Randy will get now and give the invitation, so if you'll all stand please. Oh, Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give thanks for the pleasure of gathering together for this occasion. We give thanks for this food prepared by loving hands. We give thanks for our lives the freedom to enjoy it all and all other blessings. We give thanks especially for our people that we're remembering tonight as they are preparing to move on to a different phase of their life. As we partake of this food, we pray for health and strength to carry on and try to live as you would have us live. This we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Andy, we're so happy to have you this evening. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you some of the members of the Board of Trustees that are with us tonight, particularly our Chairman, Rob Exline, who's from Salina, Kansas. Rob, if you would stand up. <laughs> Randy Hoppe, who is from Georgia. He came all this way to be with us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next to him, of course, is Mr. Berkeley, and Mr. Berkeley is an all-big-time banker throughout the whole state of Kansas. We're so glad that you're here, Mike. Thank you for coming. And my very, very good friend, Larry Brittigan, is with us tonight. Thank you for being here. And I'd like to introduce, if you'll allow me to, three gentlemen that were in my graduating class or went to school with me at the same time when I was at St. John's. It's so thoughtful of them to come all this way and be with us. One is Colonel Al Rand, somewhere you are. Roger Bigler. Roger Bigler is with us. Roger owns resorts in Philippines. And is Grant Corbin here? Grant Corbin didn't come, so he's not here. And most importantly, most importantly, I'd like to introduce to you the seniors of the 129th Corps. Will you please stand? Yeah! You know, um, we are recognizing and honoring four unbelievable people all at this head table. <coughs> you know, everyone in this room, those of you that have known St. John's for some time, love that school. And each of us love it for a different reason. And each has different depths of love for that school. But we love St. John's for what it's done for us, for the environment created for us, and what we hope it will create for men and young men in the future years. But when you say you love St. John's, you wonder what does that mean? Do we love those buildings? No, they're nice buildings, they're okay. Do we love the campus? Do we love that beautiful parade field? How green it is? Yep, that's, that's nice. Do we love to go to class every day? <laughs> do we love to get up at six every morning? Does it love to eat, do we love to eat mess hall food? That's not what we love. What we love are the people that are in St. John's. And those people are at, at this head table, the staff and the faculty that serve St. John's, but most importantly, cadets love each other. They're brothers. They've been through a lot together. And so when we say we love St. John's, it becomes a personal thing. 
personal thing regarding other people with whom we came in contact. I can't be more proud of this school year that we just had and that we're bringing to an end. And tonight, uh, just for a few minutes, we're going to recognize four people who made such an enormous contribution to St. John's. Mark Bazella, who was, where is Mark? This way. Mark is undoubtedly one of the finest math instructors that we could have possibly have had at St. John's. You have helped so many young men work their way through college and on because of what you've done for them. And Mark, we're so proud to have you on our staff. We're going to miss you deeply. Look like at Chris Zerger. This is a fantastic lady in every regard. She is just not only a good teacher, she's a very, very good human being. And she, has, she teaches her students not only English, she teaches them how to conduct themselves as gentlemen. And Chris, for that, we are deeply, deeply grateful. And then, of course, to my right here, we have Sergeant Jay. <laughs> Sergeant Jay, in his way, with his personality, his extreme articulation, <laughs> has had such an impact on every boy that attended that school. As a result of the way you handled yourself and you handled them, the way you've conducted discipline at St. John's, you have developed very, very fine young men who have more ethics and morality than they would have had without you. Thank you very much for that. And then finally, and many of you do not know Phil Kellogg. <laughs> Phil Kellogg is the one with the beard right over here. Johnny, we're going to shave that before he leaves tonight. Yes, sir. Bill <laughs> <laughs> Kellogg is a very special person because he comes from a very special family. And before I talk about you, Phil, I'd like to talk about your family for just a minute. His father was Colonel Paul Kellogg. He started at St. John's in 1964. Uh, the same year I left St. John's. From St. John's, I went to Chicago to continue my education and my baking career. And I didn't meet his father at the time. I saw this Marine walking around campus like this, and that was Paul Kellogg. And Paul started at St. John's as a teacher and then eventually became commandant. One of the finest commandants we've ever had at that school. One of the most memorable commandants we've ever had at that school. But more importantly, he was married to one of the finest ladies I've ever met, Mary Kellogg. Paul and Mary and I became extraordinarily good, close personal friends during their tenure at that school. And in fact, we had a lot of social outings together. Your father was a little wild, by the way. <laughs> we went to a lot of golf tournaments together. And Mary was just a, a saint in every way. She loved everyone. She went out of her way to be good to people. She was gracious. She was compassionate. She was forgiving. And no matter what she was doing, she would take her time to comfort cadets. What a wonderful family you come from, Phil. And then Phil joined St. John's, and for a while he was a teacher and a coach. And just prior to that, his his older brother, Paul Kellogg, worked for the school as a teacher and coach. And then Phil, and I think it was based on a conversation that you and I had, Phil became a recruiter for St. John's, and he resides in Denver, Colorado. And Phil, you've just done a great job for us in representing us in that state and generating the type of applications and that young men that, that we needed so desperately. Thank you very much for what you've done, Phil. The program tonight is going to be pretty simple. Um, each of our friends who are leaving us will have people speaking about them and their experiences with each of them. 
And we're going to start out, if you will, with Bill Kellogg. And tonight, Coach Lawrence is going to speak about his relationships and history with Bill Kellogg. Coach? And he pulls the car in the garage real quick, 
And he said, get out, get out, get out. Quack, quack, go. <laughs> what are you talking about? So here Colonel Duckers is coming up into the teardrop, and he didn't want to be seen from Mr. Child that day. So he about pulled my leg off. So, you know, that's just one story to feel endangered my life. <laughs> so I, there, there's many more of those. But, uh, you know, on, on a good, good thing, Phil and Janice Kellogg, have, uh, you know, when I was at, got to St. John's, they were uh, two of my personal close friends. You know, when I didn't have any furniture, I didn't have anything moving on to that campus, you know, Phil and Janice comes to me and says, hey, I got a bed for you, Roy. I took the bed. You know, it was nice. But several years later, when Phil does his first retirement, he says, I want the bed back. <laughs> And I said, really? And Jenna says, Bill, we can take the bed, but we don't want the mattresses. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it's, it's been great. Uh, Bill, you've been one of my biggest mentors, one of my best friends. And uh, everybody that have known you at St. John's is going to miss you. You've done a lot. Your family's done a lot. And I just truly want to say, Enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Thanks, Ryder. I appreciate that. And, uh, there's many, many stories that we could really go into. And everybody here knows that being at St. John and being part of the family, we all have a lot of stories we could talk about. I'm looking out there and I see a lot of people that I did duty with years ago, and a lot that I did some not so long ago, and then some not quite so long ago. I've been here a long time, but I see some I haven't been working with here lately. But, uh, you know, St. John's, we got a lot of stories. Uh, we laugh at a lot of them, and we've cried at a lot of them. St. John's has a special way of taking these young men, making them feel good about themselves, making them succeed in something and feel good about them and be proud of it, and make their mom and dads be proud of it. Um, going to Colorado recruiting for eight years, that, that's not a job. That's easy. To go in somebody's house and talk about St. John's is so easy to do. When you've been around and you've seen all these kids, I've seen them all come and go. And I love every one of them, like Dale says. You don't come to St. John's and not love these kids. Kids would say, Coach, why are you here? I said, because I love you. And they wouldn't believe me, but that's the truth. And everybody in this room knows that, too. Uh, there's not a lot that I really want to go on. It's been a long, strange trip. Um, and that's, a, that's a, a tune that I've known a long time ago. You guys would know it. But, uh, I wouldn't change a thing that I've done here. It's, it's been a wonderful time in my life. Um, it's a three-generation family, like Dale says. My father was here, and then I came here. My oldest son graduated from here. Um, and I can tell you one thing, in, in their hearts and in my heart right now, St. John's forever. Thank you. I swore I wouldn't cry, but I also want to thank Dale. 
who I've known for years, and how blessed I have been with knowing him. And Debbie, Debbie would talk to Phil daily, and I just met her tonight. <laughs> Where is Debbie? Who I, who I feel I've known all my life, truly. Thank you, Debbie, for making Phil's job so easy. All the people here at St. John's, and I am so fortunate to have been a part of St. John's. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, Ken, Ken and Lillian, Lillian Barber, why don't you stand up? Here are the academic deans for St. John's for a number of years. <laughs> now, the next person that we're going to honor tonight uh, will be Sergeant Jay. And I'd like to call on the major, if you will, to handle that introduction. Thank you, sir. We're going to double team, Jay. Uh, it's going to take two of us to talk about it. So uh, I'll be the prelim, and then Kyle Stewart's going to come up here and, and finish him off. Uh, you know, as Mr. Brown was talking about St. John's, it's going to be a good battle because uh, he was Golden Gloves boxer, but Kyle's pretty tough. Um, Mr. Brown was talking about St. John's, and when I think about St. John's, it's not the brick, it's not the mortar, it's not the fields. St. John's is in your heart. And, and that's where you find it. And that's what makes it special. Um, and Janice and I feel that we have the largest extended family in the whole world. And, and Sergeant Jordan uh, is part of that. Now, he and I have kept a secret for a long time. And I think that we, we should finally let, let, let it out of the bag. Uh, Sergeant Jordan and I are going to be opening up a Burger King in Puerto Rico next year. <laughs> so that's a bit of an inside joke. Uh, he never lets anybody have it their way. So, <laughs> and uh, so we, we, uh, we've known each other for for 20 years. We've worked together in the Commandant's office. Uh, for the last uh, nine and a half, and uh, I can't think of a, a person uh, that, to do a better job than he did as a deputy commandant. And a few years ago, a cadet came up to us and said, hey, you know, SJMS stands for St. John's Military School. And we looked at him and said, well, yeah, it does. And then he said, but it also stands for Sergeant Jordan and Major Stelgius. <laughs> And everybody talks about his tough love, and yes, he, he gave that. But I got to see another side, the other side. And Sergeant Lambert and Andy England, we got to see that side too. He did, I'm getting emotional, I know. But he gets emotional too. And we've had to make some very difficult decisions over the years and, and make recommendations to the president uh, about different things, some of it good, some of it not so good. And he really, really put a lot into every one of those uh, decisions. And uh, we didn't always agree, but we, we talked about it, we thought outside the box, and uh, the idea was to do everything that we could to help these young men graduate. And a, a story about one young man, uh, he decided uh, as a senior year, he was going to sign himself out. And he had a slight case of Asperger's, and they like to follow the rules. And he came to Sergeant Jay and I and said, We're, I'm signing myself out. We just looked at each other, and we couldn't let that happen, and we didn't know how to get around this. And we looked and we talked, and then we said, hey, you forgot the 24-hour rule. And the kid looked at us, 
I said, what's the 24-hour rule? I said, well, you come to us, you tell us you're going to sign yourself out, and then 24 hours later, you can sign yourself out. Oh, okay. Next week, same thing. Next week, same thing. And about every other week for the rest of the year, he'd come to us and he was going to sign himself out. But uh, that 24-hour rule kept that kid there. And uh, Sergeant Jordan always, always, always put the cadets first. His work ethic is second to none. Uh, we have a plaque from the military department, and I hope that uh, he'll appreciate it. So Sergeant Jordan, hold on. Thank you for your caring, dedication, and steadfast, tough love of the SJMS cadets over the years. You have made a tremendous positive impact on the lives of many St. John's cadets. Have a nice day. <laughs>
guys, let's check this out. If you came to St. John's and I talked to me at one time or another, stand up. Excellent, please sit down. I want to thank you for the great opportunity. This is uh, my second time. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I took my uniform off and I told my wife, I said, uh, hey, do you know I've been wearing a uniform for 41 years? He is currently the Alpha Company Commander. Not only did, was Blaze brave enough this year to take a college, two college English classes from the server, but also an honors junior class. So he got a lot of the server all day, and I'm sure really learned very much from her. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as Ms. Wood said, my name is Blaze Woody. I'm from Glenhead, New York. I'm very delighted and honored to represent Missouri tonight. Missouri began her journey at St. John's 21 years ago. Now, to paint a picture of how long that is, when I was assisting her take down the posters in her room, there was dust on the staples. <laughs> tucked in the corner of her room. In that time, she has inspired many kids to grow a love and respect for the English language. My first memory of Ms. Zerger was in geometry class my freshman year. Now since geometry is a sophomore level class, every cadet except I had Ms. Zerger's class next hour. Half the time that class consisted of completing geometry work, and the other half the sophomore spent finishing Ms. Zerger's homework from the night before. <laughs> I always remember Justin Gilbert and John Yoder saying to me, I can't wait for you to have Zerger next year. <laughs> You're going to have fun. <laughs> I recall my first day in class with Ms. Zerger, and I had only brought pens. And it didn't take long to understand that was a big mistake. <laughs> now what separates Ms. Zerger from all teachers? First, when a student walks into a room, there's an atmosphere of intelligence. The posters on the wall motivates cadets to complete his best work while providing a sense of comfort. Second, Ms. Zerger prepares students for college. She will draft assignments that will be due in a week or month. She reminds students sometimes, but expects the work to be completed when she doesn't. This allows students to become organized and teach them to manage their time. Ms. Zerger also contributes to cadet's growth by teaching him life skills, which include bringing supplies to class, possessing manners, establishing integrity, and maintaining trust. People may not know, but she attends almost every sporting event possible and always keeps her word. When entering her room, students will notice the only chalkboard still in use in the veneer of <laughs> <laughs> A student in her class will notice quickly that he determines his grades. My favorite part of the school day was when a student tried to explain to her why he didn't have his homework completed from the night before. Ms. Zerger's response every time was, I don't care. F. They're your grades, not mine. <laughs> I remember the famous words from Donald Wilson, like Miss Wooten said, after she called him cheating. You be tripping, man. <laughs> and that spelled U B T R I P P I N apostrophe. <laughs> That yeah, didn't go over too well. <laughs> Even after the sophomores frustrate her, though, she will always be the first person to tell a cadet to smile and that life is good. Ms. Zerger is compassionate, hardworking, 
extremely intelligent, and truly humble. Ma'am, you always tell me that the world is not perfect, but you are a perfect teacher. On behalf of the cadets, thank you for all your many contributions to our lives. You will truly be missed next year. Thank you for your time, and have a good rest of your night. is Peter Wilcox. He was a battalion commander in the class of 2002, the 114th Corps. Peter? Okay, I'm a kind of a traditional guy, so you have to bear with me, I guess. Public speaking is not my forte, by the way. <laughs> So good evening, I'm Mr. Browning, faculty, Commonwealth cadets, military advisors, and the 129th Corps cadets, at least the seniors. It truly was a real pleasure receiving a call from Mr. Browning asking that I reflect on Ms. Ziggler's 21 years at St. John's Military School and the impact she had on all of our lives. The only restraining profit was that I keep my remarks under five minutes. Rest assured, I'll try, but uh, we shall see. Admittedly, reflecting on what to say about Ms. Erga proved a bit more challenging than initially thought. It's not a matter of content, mind you, but rather conveying something novel to an audience who already knows her so well. Everyone here is familiar with her zeal for literature, the American novelist Ernest Hemingway being one of her favorite authors. Everyone here is familiar with the dedication to impart upon every cadet she instructs, a sense of duty to proper grammar, prose, critical reading analysis, and skills virtually every job with her after school initiatives, such as hosting the National Honor Society and the annual Spelling Bee Contest. Her efforts were recently acknowledged, albeit late, with the receipt of the Golden Apple Award for Excellence in Teaching. According to KTV, she was nominated out of a ton of teachers as the best teacher in all of Kansas. What a surprise, right? So what remains novel for me to say about this saint who has been engaged in the noble profession of teaching for two decades at St. John's Military School? A lot to consider, I know. Trust me, I do know. However, as I reflected on the impact Ms. Zerger had on my life, I came to the realization that it wasn't so much what or how she taught, but rather why she taught that intrigued me the most. Let me first provide some context with things in perspective. For years, the motivational researcher Simon Sneak wrestled with isolating the very fact that explains why certain individuals, regardless of profession, are able to inspire others while so many fail in this endeavor. He concluded, and I quote, that they all think, act, and communicate in the exact same way. And it's the complete opposite of what everyone else does. Sneak dubbed this powerful and simple idea the Golden Circle. And it explains, I believe, why Ms. Zerger has been such an exceptional teacher at St. John's for two, uh, for two decades. This is what I'd like to briefly share with you tonight, because it explains why so many alumni are still so fond of her. Let me briefly define the terms. Virtually everyone knows what they do, whether they're a military advisor, school principal, or a history or English teacher. Some know how to effectively execute their craft. But few, however, can, can cogently explain why they are able to do what they do day in and day out. And by why, I don't mean to go on their paycheck. That's the result of doing something. By why, I mean the reason, the purpose, the belief that prompts, drives, inspires one to act in unique and profound ways. It is this why factor, I believe, that has reverberated within Ms. Zerger's soul for two decades, and that has been foundational for the very reason and purpose she started at St. John's. It is this wide fact that brought forth an exuberant personality that radiated in her classroom for two decades. And it is this wide factor that informed how she approached her English classes and other after-school initiatives and what to teach, always remaining cognizant of the intellectual needs of her students. Of course, the question of what her belief, purpose, or why factor constitute naturally arises. Admittedly, it's difficult to ascertain the answer without directly, without directly asking her. However, I assume it has something to do with what Lieutenant General Zach Plenty once termed allegiance to principle or allegiance to duty that transcends all other super blandishments life throws at us. What this monster, quite simply, I believe, is love. 
love for learning, love for teaching, and love for the cadets. These few but very important principles, I believe, form the core of Ms. Zuber's why factor. And he became a powerful agent of change that has profoundly populated our memories with knowledge and joy and has influenced our lives for the better. My hope tonight is that you realize that this why factor is inherently linked to contribution. Indeed, one can argue that starting out with the what or how factors of the Golden Circle can indeed yield great contribution. The problem with that approach is that all too often it remains devoid of purpose, passion, inspiration, all the necessary ingredients to make the profoundest of contributions, which remains resonant within the Y factor. Consider, for example, one of my favorite films, The Emperor's Club. There's a profound scene that has stuck with, that has stuck with me since I first watched the film. The film begins innocently enough with the principled classics professor, Mr. Hunter, asking his new student, Martin Blythe, to read the plaque that hangs above the entrance door at the back of the classroom. In summary, the plaque captures King Shutruk Nahute's feat of expanding his empire that included large swaths of Iran and Mesopotamia around 1100 BC. The students, meanwhile, are frantically flipping through the textbooks trying to figure out who exactly is Shutruk Nahute. Mr. Hunter informs a class that he isn't to be found anywhere in the textbook. The rationale he provides is quite telling and should give us all a pause. Staring at his new body of students intensely, Mr. Hunter offers the following explanation. Great ambition and conquest without contribution is without significance. Great ambition and conquest without contribution is without significance. What will your contribution be? How will history remember you? These profound questions remain relevant for all of us, regardless of the profession we choose to endeavor, whether soldier, military advisor, lawyer, entrepreneur, or an English teacher. How will St. John's Military School remember Ms. Serger? What has been her contribution? I think the school will remember Ms. Serger for her efforts to improve the quality of the English courses, for her persistent dedication to the National Honor Society, for hosting the annual spelling bee contest, and of course the annual your trips with Ms. Stein. But quite honestly, these are of secondary and tertiary importance as they inform the what and how factors of Sanique's Golden Circle. More important is the why factor, and, at, and, and it is at the heart of Mr. Hundred's question. So I believe Ms. Zerga will be remembered as one of the few St. John's teachers who showed us all how to introspect, to discover a bit about ourselves, and to use writing as an effective vehicle for expression and all its permutations. She will be remembered for her insistence that books and literature remain a portal not just to accumulate knowledge, but to gain a glimpse of the world's rich and multifaceted culture and history, and insight into the complicated moral and ethical dilemmas humans continue to wrestle with. Whether seen through the prism of Ernest Hemingway, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, Shakespeare's Macbeth, Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman, and of course, Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Cadell. He never showed up. <laughs> but perhaps her greatest and lasting contribution to the school will have been her untiring expression of love for us all, which will endure in our hearts for the rest of our lives. The most potent agent in any education, Bunty remarked, is the person who embodies a virtue. What you are is a much more potent, lifelong elixir than what you have written or what you have said. So as I reflect on the impact Mega Server had on me, and I presume the rest of the alumni, the most profound lesson observed is that if you start with why, it will inform you how and what factors of your profession, and you will surely be amongst the few to have inspired others to be better, and to make something worthy of themselves and contribute to this great nation. So Ms. Serger, on behalf of all the St. John's alumni, we sincerely thank you, we love you, and wish you Godspeed on a much needed rest from the several decades worth of putting up with this repugnant and recalcitrant cadet. Thank you. <laughs> speaking or speeches but you did a superb job of speaking at your commencement 
And at that same time here, it made application to BMI, and he was put off on the waiting list, and he had been accepted. And um, the president of BMI was our commencement speaker. And after he heard Peter speak, he leaned over to me and says, he's in BMI. <laughs> Like now, is Sergeant Blair. Sergeant Blair, could you come forward, please? <laughs> Sergeant, you can stand right here in front where everyone can see you. <laughs> <laughs> And Sergeant Blair and I have had several conversations this last week, and I'd like to tell you some of the things that led up to uh, the final decision regarding him. Um, the United States Army decided because of our enrollment they were cutting back on those uh, officers in the junior ROTC program for which they were compensating the school, and unfortunately cut back by one. But Sergeant Blair and I talked, and Sergeant Blair, you. Um, we're going to retire, I think, after next year at any rate. And the more we talked, and we, Sergeant Blair decided that he'll leave the school now at the end of this school year. But he and I also agreed, and we're so grateful for this, Sergeant, that he will continue to coach the rifle team and be with the school during that period of time. And Sergeant Blair, if we had known this was going to happen, you'd be sitting up here <laughs> and be recognizing you. But Sergeant, thank you so much for what you contributed to St. John's. I thought you might want to say a few words. I sure can't say any words. It has already been said. I'm listening to these that are being honored up here. And I'm thinking if I had to say something, what could I do to top that? There's nothing there, because uh, they've said it all. Uh, I love St. John's just like they have. Been there in the classroom 22 years. I've really been associated with St. John's for 27 years when I first came here in 1989. And I feel so fortunate because I was kind of torn between just walking away, but that ate, ate, ate at me and ate at me. And I'm fortunate to be able to kind of retire but not retired. <laughs> I'm still connected with St. John's. Uh, you know, starting in October, of course, I'll be here through the end of uh, August uh, when this contract ends, and then my next one starts uh, in September with the rival team. So probably October to March should be pretty tied up with that. So I am fortunate to, like I said, be retired, but not retired. So thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Wooten, I'll turn it over to you for our final guest and friend that will be leaving us. Major Pazella. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wait a minute, I, I, that's about the third thing on my list. Affectionately called Major P, or just plain P. <laughs> As I understand it, Major Pazella began working at St. John's Military School on February 7th, 1996. Colonel Farmer, I believe, hired him, and Major Pazella, no, Ms. Serger only planned to teach at St. John's for two years. Major Pazella never even planned to teach. <laughs> and it's been how many years? 22. Right? Several years. So, Major Pazella is the type of person who can be counted on. One of the things that I knew, whether, whether something happened with me and I needed assistance, or something happened with a cadet and they needed assistance, if a cadet was really upset about something and he just needed to, needed someone to talk to, Major Pazella is someone I knew would always lend assistance in, what, in whatever capacity was needed. And we'll really miss that a lot, sir. Um, he he uh, would always 
be, be, be happy to counsel people and offer his time freely. Uh, we, we do have an addition to the program this, this evening. Um, Spencer Terry will be the first speaker for Major Pazella, but don't plan to leave anytime soon after that because we have a surprise second speaker as well. So Spencer Terry, class of 2006, the 118th Corps, he was the S5 in that year. to be asked to speak for Mr. P. Uh, back when I was here, he was still Mr. Pazella, not Major Pazella, so it's weird calling him Major. Um, when I first came here, I was a little 14-year-old kid, and I was scared out of my mind. And the first place I found any sort of sanctuary uh, or comfort was in the classroom, and it's teachers like Mr. Pazella, who really cared and nurtured for me uh, and loved me. Um, that helped me grow so much. And when my parents sent me here, um, I know their greatest prayer was that I would be in the hands of someone like Mr. Pazella. Um, every time I talk about St. John's, uh, one of the few things I talk about is how much the teachers and the people who work here cared for us. And I always talk about the, the story of uh, Mr. Pazella, who's this West Point graduate, nuclear engineer, or worked on the peacekeeper missile system, and somehow he ends up teaching at this little military school in the middle of Kansas. And, and I always talk about how much all of the students loved him. And how every time he'd walk into the mess hall, everyone started going, Pee! And it's, just, it, it's, it, it's so special to me, uh, for me to be able to have people like that in my life. Um, that have touched me and cared for me so much. And all of my speech is very short. I just I want to say that I am so grateful uh, on behalf of myself and the innumerable cadets that you have loved on and cared for throughout these years. I just want to say thank you so much. And I, and I pray that God blesses you and guides you on this new journey in your life. And that you just have a wonderful time. Levi Gossman or a pair, I do want to say that I, I bought a little rock for you two, Major Pazella, and I forgot to read what it says. This says retirement. It's not rocket science. <laughs> it also says you will be missed, Major P. Your valuable guidance has influenced many lives. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Levi Gosper. He was battalion commander uh, in the 125th class of 2013. And will so soon graduate from Colorado School of Mines. Good evening, everybody. Um, so, yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Levi Gottsponer. I got here in 2010, got to St. John's in 2010, and I was here through 2013. Uh, throughout that time, obviously, all three of these people who are leaving us um, had a profound impact on my life. I could give you a solid 20 minutes on any of them, no problem. Um, I'm very grateful to all of them. I have a deep love for all of them. Um, but in the interest of brevity, I'm here to talk about Major Polzella, uh, which really works out because of my career path. He's an engineer. I am also an engineer. Um, as Ms. Wooten said, I'm about to graduate from the Colorado School of Mines here in eight days um, with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. And the, the unique thing about Major Polzella at a school like St. John's was that he wasn't the one that was exceptionally aggressive or, you know, I, I don't want to use mean, but there's, <laughs> we get our fair share of that. Um, 
and rightfully so. We all come in as pretty tough kids, and you got to have some tough love to get us where we need to go. Um, Major Paul Zell was unique in the fact that, you know, you really could just go to him when you needed to talk. And he believed in me in a way that I didn't believe in myself. Coming into St. John's, my grades were not good at all. Um, I maybe had like, maybe like a 1.9 or something for high school. It was like really, really like not even going to like community college bad. <laughs> so, and I, I get to his class. I had his class every, every semester, I think. Yeah, for the entire three years I was there. Algebra two all the way through calculus. I was, I was in Major P's class every semester. And, you know, I probably would have ended up at the University of Arkansas in my hometown, which, <laughs> don't get me wrong, it's all right. Um, but he saw that I could do more than that. And there's no way I would have seen that without him. And it, like, uh, like uh, Spencer was saying, he has all these cool stories, all the things that he's done. You know, he's like a nuclear engineer for the Army. He's done all this cool stuff. And as a 15-year-old, you're, you're angry that you're in military school. You're not thinking about these things. And he makes those things look appealing. You, you decide, maybe I actually do want to do something like that. Um, you know, there's just no way I would be where I am right now without you. I'm, I'm eternally grateful to you for that. I didn't even know about mines. I didn't even know the place existed. He was the one who actually recommended the school to me. So, Major P, you know, whatever you choose to do with your retirement, man, I hope you have a good time. You know, relax. <laughs> you deserve it. You absolutely do. Um, we gave you a hard time, plenty. You gave it right back 100%. So, I'm glad we had you. I'm glad I had you. The school's going to miss you. I don't know what they're going to do without you. I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is going to be short. I just want to thank all the old boys for the opportunity and honor to serve you. Just leaving. I already spent some of the old boys for next year that I'll be back to haunt them anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> but when I first got here, interview with Colonel Farber because he needed a cell. All I remember him was walking me down the hallway. He opened the door, threw me in, and said, "Good luck." <laughs> <laughs> but I thank him for believing in me. Because, yeah, I was an engineer, but I didn't have a license to teach. And I had to go back to school. What if I was able to do it in about 18 months? But I enjoyed 22 years here. My heart's here. And when I first got here, people said, well, you're, you know, the Lord sent you to St. John's. But it wasn't because St. John's needed me. I needed St. John's. And I think every old boy knows, gentlemen, it is a rocket science. It's simple arithmetic. <laughs> Levi Godspinner. Uh, since since you're here, Levi, we're delighted to have you. Where are you, Levi? <laughs> oh yes, we're delighted to have you. Thank you very much for coming. We weren't sure he's going to make it. But a story about Levi, and I was serving as headmaster when he was a student here, and he was a new boy, and he proceeded to run away immediately. <laughs> and, uh, and he procured a car, 
<laughs> and he drove all the way to Arkansas. <laughs> and the nice thing about it was his parents were waiting for him on the front porch, and he said, I want to explain something. They said, get in the car, and they drove right back to the <laughs> now graduating from one of the finest engineering schools in the United States. What a compliment to you, Mark, that you have helped him do that. Um, at this time, Mrs. Stein, Mrs. Plumber, I personally have bought a gift for all of the, those of you that are retiring, and they'll put, you, put it on your table for you, and we don't need to open it tonight, <clears throat> but it's a gift that um, is an uh, Italian leaded crystal um, that will have St. John's engraved and in, etched, I'm sorry, etched uh, on the crystal uh, with your dates of service and also a private message for me. So thank you very much for what you've done for us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready to conclude this evening. I would think that all of you would like to raise, stand up, give appreciation to those that are leading St. John's family. Thank you. 